From a remote corner of Western Asia comes a story of the rise of consciousness in the human brain. This is northern Iraq. Beyond its rivers and rocky slopes lie the plains. Here, a remarkable group of human fossils rested undisturbed for 60,000 years. Today, the American anthropologist who discovered those bones returns, worried that ethnic wars have put the excavation site in jeopardy. Forty years ago, Dr. Ralph Selecki, then at Columbia University, explored the caves at Shanidar, where he unearthed an image of ancient man that profoundly changed the way we saw our ancestors. The professor discovered this skull. It belonged to Neanderthal man. Strangely, the skull was covered with microscopic pollen from the flowers of thistle, ground seal, spirea, and hollyhock, among others. The same pollen dust covered the rest of the weathered skeleton, suggesting that his family and friends had deliberately gathered the flowers and laid them in bunches on the dead body. These mourners left behind the earliest known signs of man's awareness of death. The return trip to the Shanidar Caves was not an easy one, despite the placid rural setting. Kurdish rebels and the Iraqi military were clashing fiercely along the hillsides and beyond. Grim remnants of war littered the roadside. Nearly half a century has passed since Dr. Selecki last set eyes on this cave. As he approached, he crossed fields of the very wildflowers the Neanderthals once placed on their grave sites. Upon reaching the entrance, Dr. Selecki was flooded with the memories of what he had once discovered inside. This is my old excavation from 40 years ago, over 40 years ago, of Shanadar Cave. As you see, the situation has changed over the years because the local people, the herders with their animals, have dumped their debris in the pit. This pit has about uh, nine meters of deposits on the bedrock. Now in this cave we have found nine Neanderthals of which two are most important. Number one found over there at the depth of about five meters and one here, Shanada 4, found at a depth of about seven meters. Number one was special because he was a, a, a man about 40 years old who had his arm cut off, perhaps with stone tools, and also he was blind in the left eye and he had rheumatism, and he's probably not very well uh, uh, good at hunting, so perhaps they kept him at home to tend fires. It was a remarkable find. It meant that Neanderthals cared for their physically disabled. Once dubbed brutish and backward, Neanderthals were actually creatures of compassion. Nearby lay other burial sites. Dr. Selecki found large amounts of pollen covering the upper half of these skeletal remains. We had found pollens extracted from the soil, something like this. And these pollens indicate 
the eight types of flowers which we think uh, were interred with the individual and this seems to indicate perhaps the uh, first signs of spiritual evolution and maybe the first stirrings of religion something unknown before in the uh, life of the Neanderthals. These bones help piece together a puzzle, not of our human origins, but of the origins of our humanity. For the first time in the archaeological record, the burial sites of Shanadar revealed a poignant human awareness of our situation. They marked the rise of human consciousness. Perhaps not coincidentally, this evolving consciousness corresponded to the evolving brain. We know these images all too well. We have seen far too often how hatred and terror can turn families into grief-stricken mourners. Whose vows of revenge pass on to the youth. Not far from this scene, an anthropologist discovered the roots of our humanity in a land now bloody with acts of inhumanity. The stresses to heart and soul are unimaginable, but the toll on the brain may be the most disturbing. Physically changed as an adaptation to the environment, the brain may eventually make violent behavior even more likely. Though he may never return to Shanadar, Dr. Selecki finds compassion has not completely disappeared and beauty can be found if we seek it. Sixty thousand years ago in the cave at Shanadar, a Neanderthal family mourned its dead, placing flowers in their graves. And from that touching, eloquent act, we can trace the rise of religion and ritual, myth and metaphor, the things that make the human a source of joy and wonder. In his notebook, Dr. Selecki jotted down a parting thought. 60,000 years ago, the Neanderthals placed flowers on their dead and showed compassion for the weak. When we are able to take another look at what we call humanity, our civilization holds the possibility of becoming something beautiful, like the flowers of Shanadar.